Thank you very much for um, your time here on ENCA. Angela, just tell us a little bit about this uh, information that you found. Everybody, of course, expects that uh, Gauteng, for instance, and many of the metros here are showing a surge. Tell us about Nelson Mandela Bay as well. So the background to the story is that the uh, South African Medical Research Council operates a wastewater surveillance program across four provinces in the country, and it involves more than 70 wastewater treatment plants. And we collect samples of wastewater from those plants every Monday morning. Uh, the samplers have to get them to the laboratories by midday, and then we measure over the next two days the concentration of the leftover genetic material from uh, the virus um, in the lab and then we develop graphs, tables, maps to share that with stakeholders. So for a couple of weeks, um, for several weeks since the third wave, we've been seeing very low or zero concentrations of SARS-CoV-2 genetic material in the sample. And then about two weeks ago, we started seeing increasing volatility in the concentration. And last week, we, you had a sense when you looked at the data that there was something bubbling beneath the surface. And then last week, we saw those um, concentrations spike quite dramatically, as you say, in Gauteng, and then also at certain wastewater treatment plants in Nelson Mandela Bay. And we then issued the information, the alerts to all the stakeholders um, to say, please take care, um, take action in your communities uh, to make sure that we try and curb um, the, the rollout of the, um, of the wave. Mm. Um, so as the Medical Research Council, have you found anything to suggest why, uh, you know, we have this new variant now? You know, you can see all these other countries, uh, you know, treating us like we're the virus itself and just suddenly closing uh, its ports so that we don't enter. Um, so anything from the Research Council during your research that you found to have, uh, you know, made this virus mutate in this way? Um, not yet, though it is possible to monitor for variants in wastewater. Uh, we have two methods of doing that. One is a more sophisticated uh, method that takes a little bit more time. It's called next generation sequencing, and we've started to do that now. And the second is more of a rapid appraisal. And for that, uh, we, uh, we, we need um, a prior information. We need primers for, that, for those particular variants. So we have those on order, and as soon as they arrive, we'll proceed um, with that. And so we will be able to probably share more information with the public around the spread of the, of the new variant um, in wastewater quite soon, hopefully. Hmm. All right, and just very quickly, while I still have you, the National Coronavirus Command Council obviously meeting and different provincial uh, command councils also meeting uh, this weekend. Looking at what you found in terms of the metros here in Gauteng and Nelson Mandela Bay as well, um, what would be your advice as the uh, research council? Is it advisable that we go uh, for stricter restrictions? Well, you know, it, it's been quite an overwhelming week, I think, uh, with all of us being very disappointed at developments and uh, the travel restrictions, etc., in South Africa. Um, but I, for myself and for the people around me, I keep reminding us that um, we need to focus on what we do have control over as individual citizens. And that comes back simply to doing whatever we can, and, and that's to just be so strict about wearing masks, uh, vigilant about hand hygiene, making sure, especially with the holiday season coming up, that we avoid crowds and gatherings. If we do have to gather to make sure that they are outdoors, and if they have to be indoors, then uh, we should make sure that there's good ventilation, open all doors and windows. And then finally, for anybody who's not yet vaccinated, to do so as a matter of urgency. And for those who are already vaccinated, as soon as you become eligible for a booster, to similarly do that as soon as possible. But that's within our power to do. And if we all play uh, that role, if we, if we perform those actions, we can make a contribution. As simple as they seem to be, they're actually proven to be effective, and we can make our contribution uh, to stemming 
the, the pandemic. Mm. As the Research Council, just very quickly because I am running out of time, but as the Research Council, do you feel that, uh, you know, do, do you agree with the scientists who've told the ENCA that uh, European countries shutting down on us was a bit unfair and unjustifiable? They should have at least let our researchers and scientists uh, come up with the plan first before just deciding that we should be shut, uh, shut out? Well, I, I concur with what the World Health Organization has said. Mm. And that's exactly what you've said now, um, that uh, travel restrictions have not been proven to be effective in the light of this pandemic. And they've, they, like you said, they've urged um, governments to wait till we get the information to adopt a science-based and risk-based approach um, uh, to curbing the pandemic. I mean, the travel restrictions can do a lot of harm in other areas of life our socioeconomic status, incomes, livelihoods, etc. So I definitely support uh, the announcements of the World Health Organization in this regard. All right. Thank you so much for your time here on ENCA. Angela Marti from the South African Medical Research Council.